Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member. Thank you to the witnesses for your, your expertise. I, I acknowledge the tremendous potential uh, of AI, but also the significant risks and concerns uh, that I've heard about, including what we just talked about, potential job displacement, privacy concerns, ethical considerations, bias, which we've been talking about in this committee for years, market dominance by large firms, and in the hands of uh, scammers and fraudsters, a whole range of nefarious possibilities to mislead and deceive voters and consumers. Uh, also, the data sets take up an enormous amount of energy to run. We know we acknowledge that. So, so we need responsible development with ethical guidelines to maximize the benefits and, and minimize the risks, of course. So, so Dr. Chowdhury, as AI systems move forward, I remain concerned about the lack of diversity in the workforce. So could you um, mention how increasing diversity will help address bias? What an excellent point. Thank you so much, Congresswoman. Um, so first of all, we need a wide range of perspectives in order to understand the impact of artificial intelligence systems. I'll give you a specific example from my time at Twitter. We held the first algorithmic bias bounty. That meant we opened up a Twitter model for public scrutiny. And we learned things that my team of highly educated PhDs wouldn't think of. For example, did you know if you put a single dot on a photo, you could change how the algorithm decided where to crop the photo? We didn't know that. Somebody told us this. Did you know that uh, algorithmic cropping tended to crop out people in camouflage because they blended in with their backgrounds? It did what camouflage was supposed to do. We didn't know that. Um, so we, we learn more when we bring more people in. So you know, op more open access, uh, independent researcher funding, red teaming, et cetera, opening doors to people will be what makes our systems more robust. A absolutely, appreciate that so much. And, and, and I wanna continue, Dr. Chowdhury, I, I wanna talk about the ethics. Um, and I expect that those in this room will all agree that ethical AI is important to align the systems with values, respect fundamental rights, contribute positively to, the, to society while minimizing potential harms, and get, gets to this trustworthiness issue which you mentioned and that, that we've been talking about. So who defines what ethical is? Uh, is? Is there a universal definition? Does Congress have a role? Is this being defined by industry? I know there's a bipartisan proposal for a blue ribbon commission to, to develop a strategy for regulating AI. Would this be something that they would handle or would ne'er be involved. Uh, and, and also, um, I'm gonna tell you the second part of this question and, and then let you respond. In your testimony, you talk about the ethical hackers and in your testimony explains the role that they play, but how can they help design and implement ethical systems? And how can policy differentiate between bad hackers and ethical hackers? Both great questions. So first I want to address the, the first part of what you brought up is who defines ethics? And you know, fortunately, this is not a new problem with technology. We have grappled with this in the law for many, many years. So um, you know, I recognize that previously someone mentioned that we seem to think a lot of problems are new with technology. This is not a new problem. And usually what we do is we get at this by a diversity of opinions and input, um, and also ensuring that our AI is reflective of our values. And we've articulated our democratic values right? for the US. Uh, we have the, the blueprint of the AI Bill of Rights. We have the NIST AI Risk Management Framework. So we have actually, as a nation, sat down and done this. Um, so to your second question on ethical hackers, ethical hackers are operating in the public good. And there is a very clear difference. So what an ethical hacker will do is, for example, identify a vulnerability in, uh, in some sort of a system. And often, they actually go to the company first to say, hey, can you fix this? So, but often, these individuals are silenced um, with threats of litigation. So what we need to do is actually have in, in increasing protections for these individuals who are operating the public good, have repositories where people can share this information with each other, um, and also allow companies to be part of this process. For example, uh, what might responsible disclosure look like? Um, how can we make this not an adversarial environment where it's the public versus companies, but the public as a resource for companies to improve what they're doing above and beyond what they're able to do themselves. I appreciate that, and I want to follow up on the earlier point about, yes, and I, I'm aware of the work that's been done so far on the ethical standards. However, I, I'm just questioning whether this is something that, it, does it need to be put into law, to regulation? Does everyone agree? Uh, and, and could this, is there hope that, that there could be some sort of universal standard? I do, ethical not, standard. I do not think a universal ethical standard is possible. Um, we live in a 
society that re that reflects diversity of opinions, thought, and we need to respect that and encourage that. But how do we prevent? How do we create the safeguards and identify what is harmful in social media? We we would think a lot about what is harmful content, toxic content, and all of this lives on a spectrum. And I think any governance that's created has to respect that um, society changes, people change the words and terms we use to reflect things change, and our ethics will change as well. So creating a, a flexible framework by which we can uh, create ethical guidelines to help people make smart decisions is a better way to go. And, and just to confirm, that would be voluntary, not mandatory. Oh, I see my time has expired. Oh. I must yield back.